Hello everyone, welcome back to the Quick Coding Bytes. Today we'll be discussing another topic that frequently appears on the ACSL math section, graph theory. Graph theory is an important aspect of computer science because graphs can model many different situations, including travel paths between cities, telephone line connections, connections between servers on the internet, and more. Graph operations can help us solve many complex problems in computer science and are a major part of the toolbox that programmers have when programming algorithms. The ACSL math section asks questions using graphs and their properties to solve problems. To start, let us first discuss some terminology that is essential to solve graph theory problems. So, what is a graph? A graph is a collection of vertices and edges. An edge is a connection between two vertices. So vertices are also known as nodes, but an edge is the line between them which connects two edges or, or two vertices or nodes. And one can draw a graph by marking points for the vertices and then drawing lines connecting the different points. So there are two types of edges possible. In this graph, all the edges are undirected edges, meaning that they have no direction. But the other type of edges that exist are directed edges, meaning they only go one way. So essentially, when the edges are undirected, then there's a path from C to F, or essentially there's a connection from C to F and F to C. If there's just a directed edge, meaning, for example, if there was just an arrow instead of this edge right here, there was just an arrow pointing from C to F instead of this edge, then there's a connection from C to F, but there's not a connection from F to C. But if the arrow was drawn both ways, if this was this edge instead of just a straight line, if it was an arrow with a line with two arrowheads, then there is a connection from C to F and F to C. So that's the difference between directed edges and undirected edges. And there can be directed graphs, which are graphs with directed edges, and there can be undirected graphs, with the, which are graphs with undirected edges. Now, let's talk about paths. So a path from vertex x to y in a graph is a list of vertices, which are successive vertices that are connected by edges in a graph. So for example, a path in this graph over here could be f, g, h, e. So let's talk about it. The reason why this is a path is because if you start at vertex f, then there's an edge which can take you to vertex G, an edge which can take you to a vertex H, and an edge which can take you to vertex E. Another example would be A, D, B. You can go from vertex A to vertex D, and then from vertex D to vertex B. A simple path is a path with no vertexes repeated, meaning a path couldn't exist like G, H, E, G, F. If that is not a simple path because G is repeated. A cycle is a special type of path, which is a simple path except the first and last vertex are the same. So for example, a path in this graph would be from A, D, B, A. A cycle, so a cycle is basically a circle. So from A to D, from D to B, and B to A. You can see that the only vertex that repeats in our example is the first vertex, which is also seen as the last vertex. Next, let us talk about something that is frequently used to solve graph theory problems in the ACSO math section matrices. So it's convenient to represent a graph by matrix um, as we'll show right here. If we consider vertex A as 1, vertex B as 2, 
then a 1 in M row I column J indicates that there is an edge from vertex I to J, where a 0 would indicate that there's not an edge. Now, that may seem a little complicated, but let's break it down. So let's consider this as I and this as, or this is I and this is J. So row I and column J. Now, to fill up this matrix, which is also known as adjacency matrix, you are to do as follows. Is there a path or is there an edge which takes you from A to A? Well, there isn't. So you would fill this box with a zero. Now, let's look, let's look at this. Is there an edge from A to B? Well, there is, so then you fill it with one. Is there an edge from A to C? No, there isn't, so that's a zero. Is there an edge from A to D? Yes, there is. And then there's none from E, F, and G. So zero, zero, and zero. Now you would go on and continue to fill out this entire matrix. Once you fill out the adjacency matrix as such, which may take a while, you're ready to learn about the next part. So let's denote this matrix as M. So again, we just did put zeros where there was an edge that connected uh, this row's vertex to this column's vertex and a zero when it couldn't. Now, think about the power. So if I were to write it as M to P, meaning you're gonna multiply M P times, then that the resulting matrix of this multiplication will indicate the number of paths of length p that exist in the graph. What that means is if I were to multiply m two times, or p is equal to two, or m squared, then the resulting matrix would represent how many paths there are of length two. Now, what that means is the m, m squares i row and jth column would represent how many paths of length 2 are from the ith vertex to the jth vertex, meaning how many paths there are from, for example, a to b if I were to multiply this matrix by 2. We'll see an example of this when we in the next section of the video. Now we're ready to solve problems. So the first problem that we would like to solve is given the adjacency matrix, which is over here, draw the directed graph. Remember, directed graph is a graph with arrows with, with edges only going one way or two ways, but they need to have an arrow on both sides for it to go two ways. So now we're looking at this adjacency matrix and we have to determine what the graph would look like. So how I like to do it is we're going to start with just labeling everything. So let's say this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. And similarly, this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. So A to A, and let's even draw those points. So this is going to be A, this will be B, this will be C, and this point over here is going to be D. So A to A has no connection, A to B has no connection, but A has a connection from A to from A to C and A to D. So let's draw an arrow here, and let's draw an arrow right here. B has a connection to A, so let's draw that. B also has a connection to C, so let's draw that. C has a connection to A, B, and D. So C has a connection to A, so this is actually double arrow. C has a connection to B, which is also going to be a double arrow. And C has a connection to D, so let's draw that. And D has a connection to A, so this can be a double arrow. C, D has a connection to B and C, so D has a connection to B, 
and D as a connection to C. And there we go. That is the directed graph. Very simple. So you can use an adjacency matrix to draw graphs as well. For the last two problems, for the interest of time, I will display the questions and the answer together. The first question is, how many paths of length 2 are there in the directed graph at the right? So this is the graph. And to solve this problem, the first thing that was done was to create the adjacency matrix. So they were put 0, so pretend this is A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, and numbers were put zeros and ones of where there was an edge that went from this row to this column's vertex. Then because we wanted a path of length 2, we square that matrix and we get the resultant matrix. And now since we want all paths or how many paths of length 2 there are, then we just sum up all the numbers in this resultant matrix to receive the answer of 24. So that is how you can use adjacency matrix in order to solve these type of problems where it asks for paths of certain length. The second question is how many cycles exist in the directed graph at the right? Now there's no trick to this problem. You just have to manually go through each combination and make sure or check if it's a cycle. So as we can see in this example, the first, that first one is A to B to D to A. Another one is A to B to D to C to A. Another one is A to D to C to A, A, D, A, B, D, B, B, D, C, B. So it's this, these type of problems require you to pay close attention to all the edges, making sure that you take into account which direction they're pointing and solve the problem accordingly. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.